In chapter three, we're going to study linear functions and quadratic functions, both examples of polynomials, which we'll study further in chapter four. But to dive right in, a linear function is a function of the form y equals mx plus b. And I know you've all seen this before. Um, the reason why it's called a linear function is because the graph is a line with slope m and y-intercept b. The domain of any linear function is all real numbers, so in set builder notation or in interval notation from negative infinity to positive infinity. Now, the range of a linear function is all real numbers if the slope is not equal to zero. But if the slope is equal to zero, then this x term goes away and you end up with a constant function y equals b. So the range is just the singular number b. Let's recall how to find slope. So if you're given two points x1, y1, and x2, y2 that live on the line L, the slope of the line L is given by delta y over delta x, right? And the delta means that you have to keep the subscripts in order, and we'll cover that in a second. But this is your rise, the change in y, over your run, which is a change in x. So you can either do y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. That's what I mean by the order in which you subtract with the subscripts has to match up. So y2 goes over x2, y1 goes over y, uh, x1. If the numbers dictate, you can also do y1 minus y2, as long as you have x1 minus x2. So again, notice that the numbers next to the x's and y's match up. Suppose that you're given this function h of x, which is negative 2 thirds x plus 5, Right here, we have a slope of negative two-thirds and a y-intercept. So I'll use y-int as a um, shorthand, is five, which means we go up five, one, two, three, four, five, and make that point. Remember that any point on the y-axis has an x-coordinate of zero. So this is really the point zero comma five. For the y-intercept. Now for the slope, there's a couple different ways to interpret this. You can think of this as negative 2 over 3, which means you go down 2 for every 3 to the right you go. Or if you push the negative to the denominator, um, you go up 2 for every 3 to the left you go, right? Because that's uh, the negative 3 is indicating that you move left instead of right. So you go up 1, 2, to the left, 1, 2, 3. And since we have a couple points, we can just connect those. And we end up with our function here, our graph. Now there's a way to tell if your function is decreasing or if it's increasing or if it's just staying constant and that's all dictated by the slope m. So our linear function is increasing over its entire domain if m is a positive number. And as we saw in this previous example, it's going to be decreasing when m is less than zero. So decreasing in the sense that as you move left to right, your y values are going in the, the towards negative infinity direction. And our linear function is constant over its domain if, well, if m is equal to zero, then we get a constant function y equals b. There is a couple different ways in which we can represent a linear function and each way of representing it has its own merit. It also comes down to what the problem is asking or what is given in the problem as information. So the first way is if you're given a slope m and a y-intercept b. So that's very similar to what we have right here. 
then this equation y equals mx plus b is called the slope intercept equation of the line. And that's the one that you're most likely familiar with right here. Now, if you're given a slope m and a point, say x1, y1 on the line, then the equation y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 is called the um, point slope equation of the line. Notice that if we add y1 to both sides, we get y equals, and if we distribute the m and combine like terms, we'll end up with the slope intercept equation of the line. Likewise, if the point given to you is 0 comma b, then this would be 0 and this would be, sorry, this would be 0 and that would be b, and then you would just add that over to give you the slope intercept equation of the line. The last one that you're, you might not be really familiar with is if you're given three numbers a, b, c, then this equation ax plus by plus c equals zero is called the general equation of the line. Now, the nice thing about this is that if x is equal to zero, or sorry, if a is equal to zero, you have a horizontal line. And if b is equal to zero, you have a vertical line. Remember that vertical lines have no slope, which is different than a horizontal line, which has a slope of zero. So the nice thing with this general equation of a line is that you can write both horizontal and vertical lines and pretty much any line you'd ever wanna write in this form here. Whereas for the first two, you can only write lines that are non-vertical because there's a slope involved. Let's look at how to apply these different definitions to this particular problem. So you're given two points, one, two, and four, seven. What we wanna do is the point slope equation of the line. First, we need to find the slope, m, which is the change in y. So if we did seven minus two, seven went first, seven is attached to four, so four goes underneath, then we have two, one. So we can simplify this down as five over three, and I recommend leaving it as a fraction because just like we did in this example, we use the fact that this is a fraction to be able to count and plot a couple points to connect. All right, so now that we have the slope, we can choose either one of these um, to make the equation of the line. Why don't we choose the first one? So if we did y minus two, that's equal to five thirds x minus one. That is a point slope equation of this line. If, on the other hand, you chose four seven, it would look like y minus seven is equal to five thirds x minus four. Now these two may look different but if you solve for y in each of these, you will get the same exact equation. In fact, if you solve for y in either of these, you'll end up getting the slope intercept equation of the line. We're going to find the slope intercept equation a little bit differently than modifying these two. What we'll do is we know our slope is 5 thirds. So as a template, this is what our function will look like. Now, we know that the point 1, 2 is on the line we want to write the equation for. So what we're going to do is put 1 in for x, 2 in for y. Now, we have one unknown, b, which we can solve for. So that's really 2 is equal to 5 thirds plus b. If we subtract the 5 thirds over, we have b all by itself. And now two is really the same thing as six over three. Since we now have common denominators, six minus five gives us one over three. 
So our y-intercept is one-third, our slope is five-thirds, and so our final equation is going to be y equals five-thirds x plus one-third. And notice, I made a choice here. I chose the first point. You can choose the second point, and you will get the same exact equation down here. If you were to take either of these and solve for y, you will get the same equation down here. It's describing the same exact line. Now the next question is to determine if this point, negative six, negative three, is on the line. And we can use either of the, or any of these equations of the line. Why don't we do the slope intercept? So I wanna take five thirds times negative six plus one third and just see what we get. If we get negative three, then negative six, negative three is on the line. If we don't get negative three, then this point is not on the line. All right, so let's see, we can do five times negative six, giving us negative 30. Divide that by three gives us negative 10. 10 is really 30 over three. And so if we have negative 30 over three plus one third, we get negative 29 over three. And that is very far off from negative three. So the answer, because when you plugged in negative six to the line and you did not get negative three, the answer to this would be no. That point negative six, negative three is not on the line. Let's play around with the general equation of the line. First, let's find the intercepts for this line, and then we'll write down the slope afterwards. Now, the y-intercept is when x is equal to zero. So if we come over here, we have negative six y plus two equals zero because I plugged in zero for x, and we can solve this equation here. So I'm gonna add six y to both sides, divide by six, and I'll simplify in one shot. So our y-intercept is one-third. And for our x-intercept, that is when y is equal to zero. So plugging in zero for y, we get four x plus two is equal to zero. Subtracting the two over, and then dividing by four gives us negative one-half. Cool, those are our two intercepts. Now, let's find the slope for this thing. To find slope, we solve for y. We have 4x minus 6y plus 2 equals 0. We'll get y all by itself. It's easier to move just the 6y over than the 4x and the 2. So adding 6y to both sides. And then we want y all by itself, so we divide both sides by 6. And now when we have 4x plus 2 divided by 6, this 6 divides both the 4 and the 2. So altogether we get y equals 4 over 6, which is 2 thirds x, plus and then 2 over 6, which is 1 third. And that's exactly the same intercept that we calculated above. And to find the x-intercept, we're going to solve for x when we have 0 equals 2 thirds x plus 1 third. And if you play around with this, you'll see that you end up getting negative 1 half 